What's up, everyone? We're going to talk about fails to deliver and the threshold security list. Um, I hear this talked about quite a bit amongst the AMC community. There seems to be a lot of misunderstanding surrounding it. Um, by no means is this any reason to hype the stock whenever it gets on the threshold list. So just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. Fails to deliver and the threshold securities list. And we're going to be taking a look at what this all means and what it can mean for the securities that end up on this list, AMC being one of them that is frequently on this list. So what is the rule that governs the fails to deliver? Well, um, back in 2000, I believe it was 2005, Securities and Exchange Commission um, amended C, uh, 17 CFR, which is the Code of Federal Regulations, Part 240, 241, and 242, um, regarding short sales. Um, this is the final rule, um, final interpretation. The summary of the rule from the SEC says that the SEC is adopting new regulation show under the SEC Act of 1934. The regulation show defines ownership of securities, specifies aggregation of long and short positions, and requires broker dealers to mark sales in all equity securities long, short, or short exempt. Regulation show also includes a temporary rule that establishes procedures for the commission to suspend temporarily the operation of the current tick test and any short sale price test of any exchange or national securities association for specified securities. Regulation show also requires that short sellers in all equity securities, they are to locate securities to borrow before selling and also imposes additional delivery requirements on broker dealers for securities in which a substantial number of failures to deliver have occurred. The commission is also adopting amendments that remove the shelf offering exception and issuing interpretive guidance addressing sham transactions designed to evade regulation M. So that's the SEC summary. So basically the SEC has adopted rule 203B3, which requires participants of a registered clearing agency to take action on all fails to deliver that exist in securities that meet the definition of a threshold security for 10 days after the normal settlement date or 13 consecutive settlement days. A threshold security is an equity security of an issuer that is registered under Section 12 or required to file reports pursuant to Section 15D of the Exchange Act, where there are aggregate fails to deliver of 10,000 shares or more per security. The level of fails is equal to at least one half of 1% of the issuer's total shares outstanding, and the security is included on a list published by an SRO and exceeds the specified fail level for a period of five consecutive settlement days. The five-day requirement ensures that securities that exceed the fails level on a single day due to an aberrant fail to deliver are not considered threshold securities. The rule is intended to address potential abuses that may occur with large extended fails to deliver, and the SROs will publish a daily list of threshold securities listed on their markets, or for which the SRO bears the primary surveillance responsibility. The SEC believes that approximately 3.9% of all exchange listed and NASDAQ securities and 4% of all securities would meet this threshold. Rule 203b3 requires participants to close out the fail to deliver position by purchasing securities of the like kind and quantity. Now, this is the part that typically gets overhyped by a lot of YouTubers um, because they see that there is a buy-in requirement, which is not always the case. We'll get into that in a second. And it says here that failure to do the buy-in requirement may result, it doesn't, doesn't say will, it says may result in penalties and restrictions on further short sales in the security. So, obviously, what's the loophole? That's probably what you're all thinking. Well, the SEC has adopted new rules for short selling, including exceptions to the uniform locate requirement. Rule 203B2I provides an exception for registered broker dealers receiving short sale orders from other registered broker dealers required to comply with Rule 203B1. Rule 203B23 provides an exception for short sales executed by market makers in connection with bona fide market making activities. And I'm sure you've heard about bona fide market making. It's essentially legal, uh, legal uh, naked shorting. And rule 203B22 provides an exception for situations where a broker dealer affects a sale on behalf of a customer that is deemed to own the security, but cannot be reasonably expected to have the security in physical possession or control by the settlement date. There is no exception for short sales that result in bona fide, fully hedged or arbitrage positions. But the SEC will consider such situations through the exemptive process. The SEC has also declined to provide a blanket exception from the requirements of Rule 203 for transactions in exchange traded funds, but it will consider such requests through the exemptive process. So what are you doing, SEC? 
basically, while there is no blanket exception for short sales that result in fully hedged or arbitrage positions, the SEC will still consider granting an an exemption on a case-by-case basis through the exemptive process. So the SEC, as you all know, likes to aid in criminal activity rather than prevent it. Um, So the SEC takes it all on a case-by-case basis, and if they think it's appropriate, they will offer relief from these rules. Now, the process would allow the SEC to evaluate each situation and determine if the exemption is appropriate based on the specific facts and circumstances of the transaction. The SEC will assess any potential negative ramifications and decide whether to grant appropriate relief. So that's what the SEC does, right? They relieve the criminals. Now, so while, while there is no automatic exception, market participants can still apply for an exemption if they believe it is warranted and they have to go through the SEC to do that. And the SEC will take, uh, take it on a case-by-case basis and provide the relief from the buy-in requirement and the locate requirement if the SEC deems it appropriate to do so. Now, this is the specific rule um, that that regards short sales in threshold securities, which is rule 203B3. The SEC has created a rule called 203B3 to address stocks with a significant amount of failures to deliver. Um, And then those are stocks that were not delivered on time after a sale. This rule requires that any participant of a registered clearing agency to take action on all failures to deliver within 13 consecutive settlement days. This is applied to equity securities of an issuer that is registered under Section 12 and has 10,000 or more shares of aggregate fails to deliver for five consecutive settlement days. The SEC believes this threshold will not burden the majority of securities where there are no concerns regarding settlement. Securities that exceed the specified fail level for five consecutive days will be deemed as a threshold security and subject to the restrictions of Rule 203b3. And a daily list of these threshold securities will be published by the SROs or the self-regulatory organizations, which are your lit exchanges, um, OCC, you know, things like that. Now, this is the closeout requirement from this rule. The participant must close out the fail to deliver position by purchasing securities of like kind and quantity, and any broker dealer for which it clears transactions is prohibited from affecting further short sales in the particular threshold security without borrowing or arranging to borrow the security until the fail to deliver position is closed out. So what that's saying is they can still borrow the security and short it. That's the only way they can do it if it's on the threshold list, but they can't effectuate short sales without doing that first. Now, if a participant can identify the broker dealers or accounts that have contributed to the fail to deliver position, the requirement to borrow or arrange to borrow prior to effecting further short sales should apply to only those particular broker dealers or accounts. Now, The closeout requirement loopholes. Market makers, including options market makers engaged in bona fide market making, are exempt from the from the requirement to close out fails to deliver in threshold securities that remain for 13 consecutive settlement days, as long as the fails are not intentional and the market maker is taking steps to address them. So you see how it's all, you know, it's up to the individual, right? Anybody can just say, oh, well, yeah, I'm taking the appropriate steps to remedy this situation. And as long as they uh, it's, they can just say that it's not intentional, and then the SEC crime promotion continues. So that's why you see AMC on the threshold list so much, and nothing happen, um, no effectuated buy-ins occur, because there's loophole gal- galore all throughout this, this, um, uh, this rule and these rules. This, again, was made in 2005, and guess who governs this rule, or originally did, when it first came out? The NASD which is now FINRA, which now operates the ADF. It all ties in together. So set crime promotion. Now, how can AMC stay on the threshold list for so long? It is possible for a threshold security to remain on the threshold list for, let's say, more than 25 days without a buy-in, occurring if the fail-to-deliver position is being closed out through alternative means, which they can do, such as market maker arranging to borrow the shares or if the participant responsible for the fail to deliver position is still in the process of closing it out. In some cases, a participant may be granted an extension to close out the fail to deliver position if they are able to demonstrate that they are taking appropriate steps to do so. Those appropriate steps will never know what they are. Shrouded in mystery from the SEC and all of this litigation is written specifically this way to allow for these uh, you know, conflicting uh, loopholes to occur, but they're not technically required to do anything that these rules are quote unquote requiring them to do because the SEC takes it all on a case by case basis and provides relief exemptions 
and things like that where they deem necessary. And one of those exceptions automatically goes to market makers that conduct bona fide market making or legal naked shorting. So a lot of this is legal and the sex aware of it. Now, where is this list? The, the place that I like to go and get this list is the Options Clearing Corporation's website. Um, you just go to the market data section and you'll see a bunch of different data series that you can look at. But among this series, you'll see the threshold securities list. When you click on that, just click the download button and then it will download a text file, um, or I'm sorry, a CSV file with all of the um, information on there. AMC is currently on the list, uh, obviously. Whoops, I wrong arrow. should be the one below it. But if you see the Y here, that means, yes, the regulation show threshold flag is flagged. So AMC is on the list, obviously, and there are a bunch of other securities on there as well. Now, where are the, where is the fails data? You can actually look at the fails data and the threshold list and see you know, how many fails failed for AMC on a particular uh, date window. And the date windows run two times a month one for the first half of the month, and then one for the second half of each month. And starting uh, 2009, July, each month is contained in two files. The first half of a given month is available at the end of the month. The second half of a given month is available about the 15th of the next month. So not only uh, do they report these late, just like short interest, but uh, they do it twice a month, just like short interest. So in, in my opinion, the fix for this would be to, uh, to report this data on a daily basis, but they don't. Now, the price field includes the closing price of the security on the previous day as long as the price is available and is greater to or greater than one penny. When the price is not available or is less than one penny, the field is filled with a uh, just quotes. Even when prices are included in the data, we cannot guarantee that this price matches closing prices available from other sources. Wait, hold on. What? Even when prices are included in the data, we cannot guarantee that this price matches closing prices available from other sources. So they're not even, they're saying right here that they don't even know if their own data is accurate because it's all a giant mess. Now, please note that fails to deliver can occur for a number of reasons on both long and short sales. That's right. You may not have known this, but fails to deliver can occur on long sales as well. And there's also fails to receive as well. Um, but again, it can happen for a number of reasons. Um, and they fails to deliver aren't always necessarily the result of shorting. So keep that in mind. That is important to remember. They're not always um, because of shorting and are not evidence of abusive shorting or naked short selling. Well, all the abuse, uh, all the evidence you need of that abuse comes in other areas like the ADF, like the fact that there's only one registered uh, participant to it, like the fact that AMC is traded over the counter when it should not be. Um, but anyways, I'll link all of these sources uh, below so you can take a look at it. But yeah, I mean, they're not even confident in their own data. We cannot guarantee that the data will be posted by a particular date. We cannot guarantee the accuracy of the data because they don't even know, but yet they claim to be regulating us. And this is what the data downloads looks like. As you can see here, it's, uh, you know, more than halfway through April. They said, we just read that they, they post the first half of the month around the 15th. They still haven't done that market wide. So we're sitting here on April 22nd going into the 20, uh, I'm sorry, is, what's, what's today's date? Yeah, 22nd, uh, Monday will be the 24th, and they should have already had this, this next set of data posted as of the 15th of this month. So they're not even following their own rules and their own reporting requirements. The whole thing's a freaking joke. So whenever you see AMC on the threshold list, it's honestly nothing to get excited about because there is ways around it. Um, however, we're going to take a look at, the, uh, at some of the data, the threshold security data. Um, I'm going to go to the website. I'm going to click the... March 2023, second half, because we don't have April yet. I'm going to go, I'm going to open this zip file, and I'm going to show you how you can look at this data pretty easily. So I'm going to select all of this, and then I'm going to paste it in an Excel file. Then I'm going to delimit the data by the uh, the straight line. God, I know the name of it. This key here, if you delimit by that key, it, it's like the separator for all of the data. Then you can just easily take this, highlight it all, and then analyze the data. We may we may get something here. It's, it's analyzing the data. It's going to take a second. So let's take a look. The very first thing that comes up, I'm going to expand this out, and you'll get the fails by security. So number one is MOLN. It looks like by a metric shit ton. Holy crap. Uh, but if you want to find AMC, I believe you can just say fails 
for AMC right here. Yeah, and it gives it to you right there. So the sum of the quantity of fails for AMC is 34,731,586 shares have failed. And that keep in mind, this is just for this reporting period, half of a month for AMC. So again, that's that's quite significant. Um, that's almost the, uh, that's more than uh, two thirds of the float. So that's quite a bit of shares to fail in half a month. Uh, so that's where it can get substantial. And you look at the short interest being 20% short. Um, yeah, it's crazy. But the problem is they do not have to close these out by buying the securities back. That is a misconception. It is a option, but they can very well get, a, get away without doing that because as we just read in the rule, there are loopholes where they can close these out by other means and not all fails are caused by short selling. So keep those important things in mind. Um, again, 347 million. Wait, let me make sure I got that right. I'm not retarded. 34 million. Sorry. Okay. I've, I had one too many digits. 34,731,586 shares failed. So not two thirds of the float, um, almost 10% of the float, but still quite a significant amount for half of a month. So again, you may see AMC on the short list for quite some time. They get extensions, they get exemptions, they get case by case relief from the SEC. Everybody's working to help them prevent from uh, taking responsibility for their actions. Um, and again, keep in mind, uh, the market makers have the bona fide market making loophole. They, they're able to still short as long as they borrow or, or can locate the uh, or someone to borrow the securities from. So the whole thing's just a big freaking joke. What really needs to happen for AMC is they need to start making earnings. That is what's going to be the biggest ball cruncher for Wall Street is if AMC and Ad American somehow figure out a way to um, get some profits in their earnings, which I believe are doing a little better than before. But uh, we'll, we'll see how it, how it plays out on this next earnings report. Hopefully we get some good numbers um, and see where we go from there. So yeah, that's basically it for the fails. It's really not much. It's just you can't really rely on these reg show rules. I know David Lauer's a, a big pusher of the AMC stuff. Keep in mind, this dude worked for Finra, and you know I think a lot of uh, a lot of these people that are from the industry, like Suzanne Trimbath and all them, they're not here to help us. They're here to you know sell us on things that aren't truly accurate. But uh, yeah, there's loophole galore. They don't have to close them out. They don't have to buy in. There is ways around it. Um, it's not all black and white. There are SEC dealings going underneath the table with relief, exemptions, um, and all that. So it, uh, don't no need to get discouraged. The good news is is that uh, as long as the company has a has a true plan moving forward to make revenue, then you know there's only good news from here. So, uh, but yeah, don't let the hype surrounding this fails stuff and uh, threshold list stuff get to you because honestly there's really no reason for it because again, they have loophole after loophole after exemptive relief after case by case sec evaluation um, that they have at their disposal. So but yeah, look at Moln though, dude. Holy shit. I mean, that thing's been just getting wrecked this whole time. And you know, there is more than just AMC on there. I, I thought it would be more near the top, but uh, here's the individual amount for AMC on a day by day basis. So again, keep in mind, each of these reports takes out half of a month only, and there's going to be, you know, on average about 15 trading days in uh, each report. So right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 out of those 15 days for this reporting window, which the other two are likely holidays. Um, basically, they're, they're failing every, every freaking day. So the problem is the SEC doesn't actually prevent manipulation. They encourage it and they obviously support it just like they did with etfs in 2021 um, they provided exemptive relief to that as well i mean that's all they've been doing and uh you know regulation show was drafted by the nasd itself which is the adf which is now finra which now owns the adf which now <laughs> you know owns the regulation show rule so isn't it funny how all of that ties in together next i'll cover the cost to borrow and why that also shouldn't be looked at as any hype narrative, because that is gamed as well. And this uh, this side of things is more gamed by the big banks, not so much the market makers, but your fails are gamed by the market makers um, and your broker dealers. So that's the fails for you. And I uh, hope somebody learned something. I will link all this below so you can have access to this.